we need to get you guys leveled up as soon as possible. And to do that, we're going to need three things. We're going to need a whole lot of gold. We're going to need general R&D and a lot of tech chests. Yes, those are in the millions. Get on my level, bro. Don't worry, you're not actually going to need that many tech chests and R&D. Well, at least not for one level. Stay to the end, and I'll tell you why I have so many of those, and I'll tell you what you get when you hit max level. Spoiler alert, max level is level 80. Now when I talk about leveling up, of course that means upgrading all the things in your war room or your command center. The name of the building changes as you level up, but you upgrade your buildings and or units in here, you get experience. Once the experience bar is full, you level up. I think we can all figure that one out. But there are other ways to level up, mainly early on in the game. For example, as you donate to Alliance Technology, you do get experience, and early in the game, this can level you up surprisingly fast. However, even if you level up fast through upgrading the Alliance Tech, it doesn't really matter all that much because if you're a level 40 with level 30 buildings, you're essentially a level 30 with just a fancy title. So this video is going to be about leveling up your actual account by upgrading these buildings as quickly as possible. Now you're all going to hit certain walls when you're trying to level up in the game. Generally from level 1 to 40, maybe level 1 to 50, most people are going to run into issues with tech, all the items that come out of the tech chests. Once you hit that point, usually the thing people are going to have a lot of trouble with is gold, up until about level 70, and then from level 70 to 80, usually the biggest problem you run into is general R&D. Now, of course, we all know this is a pay-to-win game. We can see it within five minutes of playing. If you pay a lot of money, you're going to level up faster. But I'm going to talk about free ways to do it. I'm also going to talk about efficient ways to do it. So if you do decide to spend money, you're not wasting your money. Ah, oh, the radar truck. A wonderful feature Top War added, something they definitely did right. I wish this was available while I was leveling up, but it's available for you guys. In here, you can complete different types of missions that give you various types of rewards. Now, as you level up, you unlock different types of missions as well as different types of rewards. However, early game, this really focuses heavily on the items that you need to level up. So it's definitely something that you'll want to take advantage of. And while it's your first stop for leveling up, it should not be your only stop because the missions that you get from the radar truck only recharge so fast. So when you have energy left over after you've completed all your missions, there are some other things that you could take advantage of to level up a little bit quicker. And the radar truck can also benefit from some energy management techniques as well as reducing the cost of the energy it takes to do some of these missions, which I'll discuss momentarily when we go over the tech chests. Now, when you run out of missions, I have heard from some of the newer players that there is a pack that you're able to buy that allows you to recharge some of your radar missions. I would advise against it. Putting money into something that's going to give you short-term gratification rather than long-term growth is not the best way to do things. If you are going to put money into the game, I would recommend putting it into energy management, which again, I'll discuss momentarily. So your first stop for leveling up, knock out those radar truck missions, and then we're going to go old-fashioned, and I'll tell you about how we used to level up, and at least how you can spend some of your extra energy once you're done with your radar truck missions. Since tech is the first thing that generally people run into an issue with, we'll go ahead and start off with that. The most efficient use of your energy, or VIT, is to take out Warhammers. Yes, you can get tech items through taking out Dark Forces, and you can get specific tech items to level up specific buildings, so that can help you focus. But, unless you're level 79, about to hit level 80, you're going to need every type of item, so it's better to use your energy wisely by attacking Warhammers and getting as many tech chests for the amount of energy you're spending. Also, you're going to want to make sure that you join your 50 rallies each day, that your Alliance members are running because that allows you to get tech chests as well as R&D without even having to spend any of your own energy. Now let me cover energy management just a little bit so you can make the most out of your energy. You'll notice at the top of the screen you'll see your energy bar, and if you click the lightning bolt you can see how long it takes you to recover one energy as well as how long it's going to take you until your bar is maxed out. The default energy recovery is one every six minutes. This can be reduced. If you click the plus sign, it'll bring up the screen that shows you your VIT canisters so you can restore your energy. I would recommend not using these unless there is currently an event going on that has you taking out Dark Forces or Warhammers. You don't want to use these if there's not an event going on because it's better to double dip them when there is an event going on so you can level up even faster. So save your energy canisters until there's an event such as the arms race for the Warhammers, the arms race for the Dark Forces, or there are special week-long events where you can get points for taking out Warhammers and Dark Forces. So make sure you save your VIT canisters for there so you can double dip on rewards. Now, as I just mentioned, the default energy recovery rate is one every six minutes, but mine is down to one every two minutes and 40 seconds. So let's talk about how to reduce the amount of time it takes to recover your energy. That way you can get energy faster so you can grind out more tech chests as well as R&D. 
Once a month, there is a decor bundle that comes out, and for every single one of the decor bundles, the very first item that is for sale in there is an, a decor that gives you a basic VIT recovery speed of 5%. This reduces the amount of time it takes for you to get an energy back. And these do add up very quickly because there are many decor bundles. Now, for every single one of, de of the decor bundles, the one that reduces the recovery time for your energy is the very first pack. It is sold by itself for $5 or what's equivalent to the 300 gem pack for those not using the US dollar. A cheaper way to help with your energy management or something you could do on top of reducing your VIT recovery time is unlocking the hero Diana. Unfortunately, this is also only available through a paid method. However, she's only $1 or equivalent to the 60 gem pack. Diana has an incredible ability to reduce the amount of energy it takes to attack things. So attacking dark forces, war hammers, throbs, refugees, all have their energy cost reduced by two when Diana is in the march. So Diana can make your energy go much farther, allowing you to get more tech chests as well as R&D. She is arguably one of, if not the most important thing in the game to buy, and thankfully she's pretty cheap. But let's move on to some free methods. We've already talked about the Warhammers being the most efficient use of your energy to get tech chests, but there is also the Dimensional Mines. Once you reach a high enough level to unlock this feature, you can attack things in the dimensional mines up to five times per day and you can start gathering in this facility. One of the things that you're able to attack are these pink crystals and when you attack them, they give you tech chests as a reward. Depending on the level of the node that you attack depends on how many tech chests per hour you're able to get. Starting out at level one, maxing out at level five, which would give you 150 tech chests per hour and you can stay in here for I believe 11 hours. So definitely a fantastic way to get tech chests. Another free way, is if your alliance has obtained enough alliance tokens and enough people need tech in your alliance, they're able to build the tech database, which is a gathering point that can be established on the map within your alliance territory, where you can send a march to gather tech chests. And one of the bonuses for these facilities is they cannot be attacked. You can also build a facility for general R&D as well, and it works in the same way. There are plenty of events out there that also can give you R&D or tech chests as a reward. For example, the arms race every day, you can get tech chests from this, so make sure you complete that. But I'm not going to address too many events in this video. I really just want to focus on the things that people have access to at all times. Now that we've talked about tech chests, let's move on to the second thing that people generally have an issue with, and that is gold. I know it seems like you're not going to have an issue with gold if you're still a low level, but that's because as you unlock more of your island by getting rid of those forests and those monuments, you are getting an unreasonable amount of gold for your level, which makes it seem like gold is no problem in the game. However, roughly level 40, level 50, somewhere around there, you're going to start having big issues with gold when you stop getting that. So I want to talk about how to get as much gold as possible without having to just buy it from Top War. And thankfully, everything about the gold that I'm going to talk about is free. Obviously, the majority of your gold is going to be coming from your gold mines. And in your command center, the merge gold mines upgrade is the very first thing that you should be focusing on. If you have multiple choices for upgrades, the gold mine should be your main focus no matter what because that's going to help you level up better long term. You'll also notice in your gold collector that it says effective gold mines and it gives a number out of 10. You wanna make sure that you always have 10 gold mines. Anything more than 10, they're not gonna produce any gold. Anything less than that, you're losing out on potential gold. So always make sure that you have 10 gold mines on your base as high a level as you're able to make them. However, you can make your gold mines even more effective without having, having to level them up. Although of course you should level them up you do have a stat called gold production increase. And as you increase this, it of course increases the effectiveness of your gold mines. There is many ways to increase your gold production stat. However, the most effective by far is putting a rare and common gold production skill on all of the heroes that you don't use. A rare gold production skill gives you 2.5% per level where a common gives you 1% per level. You want to equip all the heroes that you're not using with gold production skills. And you want to make sure that you do not level up your gold production skills unless you have nowhere to put them. In other words, fill up all your heroes with level 1s before you start making level 2s. Just because of the way the math works, when you start leveling them up, you lose out on gold production if you could have put lower levels on other heroes. For example, a level 2 common gold production is going to give you 2%, but it takes 3 commons to make a level 2. If instead you put those three commons on three different heroes, you would have a 3% gold increase instead of a 2%. So do not level up your gold productions unless you have nowhere else to put them. Make sure all the heroes you don't use 
have a rare and common gold production and a new hero comes out just about every month so if you can save up 3,000 gems and you should be able to get the new hero. Generally when a new hero comes out they're available with gems and you can get them for 3,000 or less gems on average. Even if you don't plan on using the hero for combat, it gives you another hero that you're able to put gold production skills on to help you level up, especially later in the game when the gold costs get ridiculous. And once you hit max level, there's a lot of things that cost gold, so having that gold production base will definitely help you out in the game. And I know a lot of you are going to hit that wall where you're going to have issues with gold, but for the love of God, do not gather gold. I promise you it's a waste of your time. For example, here's a normal gold tile. I can gather 712 DD per hour. If I look at a mechanical master's facility, I can gather 1.08 EE per hour. 1 EE is, of course, 1,000 DD. The numbers get weird once you level up. But the point of this, if I go into my base and see how much gold I produce per minute, which you can find out by hitting the plus sign next to your gold at the top of the screen, you'll notice at the top it says production rate per minute. I am producing 429 DD per minute. Now, if I go back to that really nice facility that says I can get 1.08 EE per hour, that's per hour. But my gold production can make this in about two and a half minutes. It is not worth your time to gather gold. Instead, focus on gathering food and oil so you can upgrade your class and your suppressions. I know you'll need gold. Don't waste your time gathering it. It's, I promise you it will hold you back. Just let it come from your gold production. Work on getting rare and common skills so you can increase your gold production farther. Don't gather gold. The last thing I'm going to mention about gold is is the shining gold chest. Of course, you can get these chests through various points in the game, and when you open them, you get gold. Now, in the description of the item, it says that its amount of gold that it gives you is related to your gold mine's production. That is a lie. It is actually related to your level. So the higher level you are, the more gold that these chests are going to give you. Now, as a result of this, you should not open your gold chests unless you need them for an upgrade. And if you do need them for an upgrade, you should only open up just enough to get that upgrade. When you go to open up a chest, it'll tell you how much gold you're going to get. So if I open up one box, it gives me 730 DD. If I go to open up 45, it's 3.37 FF. So you can see how much gold you're going to get. As a result, you should only open up what you need. And the reason for this is let's say you open up what you need, you get an upgrade, and then you level up. That means your remaining chests are going to give you more gold because you're a higher level now. So don't open these up unless you plan on using them and only open up just enough to get the upgrade done. Now we move on to the final thing you need, and that's the R&D. Now this is going to sound very similar to the tech chest, so I'll just kind of summarize this a lot. If you reduce your VIT recovery, you're going to have a much better time getting general R&D. Diana's significantly going to help you grind out Dark Forces much quicker. As I mentioned earlier, Dark Forces are a better source of R&D than the Warhammers are, at least for the amount of energy that you spend. So once you hit about level 70 and you start running into that R&D wall, Dark Forces are going to be the main thing you'll be focusing on. There is the Alliance infrastructure that allows you to build an R&D database where you can go out and gather R&D, so that's also going to be helpful. The only other thing I have to add that is going to help you get more R&D is the sand table exercise. Now, of course, you can get R&D from other events and stuff like that, but the consistent way that you're going to get it is through grinding out dark forces as well as attacking the sand table. You can attack it five times per day. One of the potential rewards is R&D, and you can get a decent amount of R&D from attacking the sand table. So you want to make sure that you participate in this every day. Now, as I promised at the beginning of the video, I'm going to explain why I have so many tech chests, R&D, and gold. And, well, the answer is kind of boring and anticlimactic. I have nothing to spend it on. This is a complaint that the community has had against Top War for quite a while now. You'll notice that my command center, all my buildings, my repair room, everything is max level. My units are max level, which allows you to unlock Valhalla units, all of which I've unlocked. And now I have nothing to spend it on, so it just piles up in my inventory. All of us max levels generally pile up millions of these rather quickly. We're just high levels. We get a hold of the stuff quickly. It's not particularly impressive. We just have nothing to do with it. People have suggested making a store that allows us to exchange these for items that actually help us at our level. But Top War hasn't seemed to do anything. They did release a statement at one point where... People were asking if they were going to do something for max levels to be able to turn in these items to get something for them. And Top War basically said that when events come out and awards come out, that some of the things are helpful for new players and some are helpful for old players. And if it's not useful for you, well, it is what it is. 
Personally, I don't find that to be a very satisfying answer, but it's the answer that Top War gave, and that's the reason why so many level 80s have a ridiculous amount of all these leveling items. But let's go ahead and turn to a happier subject and talk about what you get once you hit max level. I've already covered a little bit of these Valhalla units. Once you manage to reach level 80 and you have upgraded your unit merge to level 80, you then have the ability to unlock Valhalla units. They are rather expensive, but there are three types for each branch. And at level 80, you unlock the Super Weapons Lab, which I'm sure many of you leveling up will appreciate this, will display all your resources at the top. I was so happy to see this feature because I was tired of looking for an upgrade just to figure out how much food and oil I have. But once you reach level 80, it is nicely displayed up at the top, and this is the building where you're able to train Valhalla units. And each one of these Valhalla units have different stats. They have varying amounts of HP and attack. They all also have additional abilities. For example, the Air Force one that everybody is after has the ability to attack every enemy in an enemy's march. So like Navy units are able to attack the front three units in a row, this Air Force unit can attack every single stack in a march. Tell me that's not overpowered. But all of these Valhalla units have their own special abilities that do make them incredibly strong. Except for the Shrek. We don't talk about the Shrek. Now before you guys go, make sure you check out my Discord. I have the link for which in the description below. A lot of helpful information in there. Spreadsheets the community has made as well as the up-to-date list of gift codes. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you to everybody who subscribed. And as always, have a fantastic day.